Einstein, Galileo, Tesla, Michael Orden. What comes to your mind hearing these names? Geniuses, right? People born with some god-gifted talent, prodigies. Well, not this man. Laszlo Polgar, a Hungarian educationalist, studied the lives of 400 great intellectuals and concluded that any healthy individual can become a genius with sheer hard work if started early. He believed that there is nothing like inborn talent. The government officials found this theory so absurd that they asked him to consult a psychiatrist. The only way for him to prove his theory was to try this on his own children. So, he started writing letters to a number of women asking them to marry him so that he can conduct his experiment. Most of them thought of him as a madman and rejected. However, a Ukrainian foreign language teacher named Clara found his theory appealing and decided to marry him. And in 1969, Susan Polgar was born. Laszlo wanted to choose a field where he can train Susan and make her a genius. But choosing something like an art or painting would always raise questions on her skills. Finally, he decided to choose chess. Unlike other professions, chess is based on a ELO system which ranks individuals on the basis of their performance. This way, no one could doubt her skills and thus the training started. Laszlo himself was a mediocre chess player but he read books and trained Susan in a way that was enjoyable and soon Susan was hooked. Next, when Susan turned 5, Laszlo took her to a chess tournament where all the chess players were more than twice her age and she won the tournament, defeating one after the other, her final score being 10 to 0. People from all around the globe started calling Susan a born genius. In 1974, Clara gave birth to Sophia and in 1976, Judith was born. Only if Laszlo could make them all world class in chess, it would prove that Susan was not a born genius and anyone can become a genius. Both Judith and Sophia saw their elder sister playing chess and started liking the game themselves, practicing day and night. Soon the sisters accumulated over 10,000 hours of practice. Let's now look at the results of the experiment. At the age of 12, Susan became the world champion for girls under 16. Less than two years later, she became the top rated female player in the world. In 1991, she became the first woman player ever to reach the status of a grandmaster. By the end of her career, she had won four world championship titles and five chess olympiads. Sophia won the girls under 14 championship and ended up winning a number of chess olympiad. She stunned the world of chess by winning eight state games against the world's best grandmasters, performing at an ELO of 2900 at the age of just 14. This world-class performance of her was recognized and named the sack of the room. Judith became the youngest grandmaster ever in the history of chess at that time. She remained as the world's top female player over a decade. Over her career, she defeated almost all the best chess players in the world including Gary Kasparov and is universally considered as the best female chess player of all times. Seeing young Judith play, the world champion Gary Kasparov said, She has a fantastic chess talent but she is a woman after all. It comes down to the imperfections of feminine psyche. No woman can sustain a prolonged battle. And Judith replied, not with her words, but her gameplay. Polgar brought Kasparov to the brink of defeat in 1994. He literally had to cheat in order to avoid losing to a teenaged girl. And finally, in 2002, Judith defeated Gary in just 42 moves. Gary was ranked number one at that time. Kasparov later stated in his books that if based on Polgar's games, to play like a girl meant anything in chess, it would mean relentless aggression. The experiment ended up proving that there is nothing like born talent and anyone can become a genius with sheer hard work. What do you think? Thanks for watching.